Hello everyone, uh, my name is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet trainer here in Tempe, Arizona uh, for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants. And here's another set of videos. So I actually had someone uh, that took my class that had a question and it was a pretty good question. So um, I went ahead and I looked up what we could do here to kind of satisfy the situation. And let's talk about that in just a moment. So or for a moment <laughs> sorry all right so check this out guys so let's say that we have a primary link okay uh, a WAN link that the majority of our traffic should travel through and then a backup link and let's say that there's like a huge difference in bandwidth between these two connections how can we essentially get our traffic to always kind of flow across the main one okay and not get stuck quote unquote on the second one. Now, if you think about it, if we do a priority only on our static routes, I mean, that's fine, but unless those connections stay dead, they can technically get stuck in the secondary, and that's exactly what we talk about when we talk about doing a link protection. And a link protection is where we change the distance off of one of the routes to make sure that all the sessions are forced out uh, and using the primary link if there's ever a failover change. So. If that didn't make sense, we're going to demo here in just a second. So, but I'm going to break up these videos in a couple of chunks just because they're kind of, you know, I don't like uh, recording them very long. So that's going to be our first goal, though, is to make sure that this primary WAN link is always the one that's going to be used. And this backup link is only if the primary goes down. So uh, this is left over from my um, NSC4 impromptu lab so we already have a link status set up on these links so failover should happen automatically and we also played around with the equal cost multi-path load balancing algorithms look at that the algorithms that'd be nice if I could spell right guys so there we go this is why I'll never be a youtuber there we go so um, anyways <laughs> So in the next video, we're going to try some different methods here to maybe see if we can't keep both of them alive, but still force the majority down port one. So we can do something a little bit more than just a priority number. We can actually distribute the traffic based off of different algorithms. So, um, and then I said, you know what? Uh, we're eventually going to have to mess with the SD-WAN stuff because it's so popular. And that is going to be another option that we can explore. So uh, a video after that is going to be creating a lab environment in GNS3 for us to play around with SD-WAN. So um, also my grading to SD-WAN is not s as simple as just flipping a switch, especially if your 48 is already in production. And that's because your WAN links cannot be in use. So we're going to go ahead and look at... Uh, uh, maybe switching over to SD-WAN without bringing down the network. I mean, that's going to be our goal. <laughs> okay, that's going to be the ultimate challenge. All right. And then lastly, our goal for this uh, demo is going to be exploring different ways that we can distribute the traffic based off of SD-WAN rules. Now, what's nice about the SD-WAN rules is that it's an actual, and to the best of my knowledge, it's an actual... Um, it's an actual process, a daemon that's doing intelligently the, the routing and also the distributing of the traffic instead of just a mathematical algorithm that's kind of baked into the kernel. So uh, it's way more intelligent and especially with application control, uh, it can be way more specific. So um, yeah, I went ahead and I stayed on 48.6.0 for this demo just because that's the one that my participant that took my classes on. Uh, the S, the S, the, the 6240 OS is a little bit different though. Um, it's a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a little bit more advanced when it comes to what you can utilize with the SD-WAN, but it should still satisfy our goals here. So let's go ahead and shut up and actually do something. Let's go ahead and uh, see what our FortiGate is configured with right now. So we're going to open up PC1. Yay! This is because I haven't been on it for a couple of days. So um, didn't I set up LDAP? Let's see here. Can I just log in as Devin? Nice. Looks like it worked. So I was in the middle of doing a video for um, our automation stitching. So that will come up someday. Anyways, well, let's go ahead and go to our network. 
let's go to our interfaces. So here you can see that we have two WAN connections that we zoned together. Now what's nice about using the zones is that the zones will um, give us the ability to create a single firewall policy for both of the interfaces so we don't have to worry about um, writing multiple firewall rules between them, so which is not too bad. All right, so I'm going to come in here on port one though. Here we go, and I am actually going to change this to uh, primary just for my own, just for my own, uh, you know, simplification. And I was always told that this will actually this will actually mess with your traffic and not to use it if you don't have to. So I'm going to leave that blank. But we're going to pretend for the sake of this class that we have 400 megs on the primary and only something like 50 megs on the secondary for bandwidth. Okay, so there we go. And then let's go over to our... WAN2 and call it our backup WAN. And this is just for this is just for us as administrators. So alright, there we go. So and then we do not have SD WAN rules configured. We do have a link load balancer uh, algorithm configured though, or a, a link health check. So if we go over here to SD WAN and go to SD WAN monitor, you'll see that the two connections are up and the majority of the traffic is passing through port one okay so if we pop open this console here alright and we do a config system settings I believe it is come on and then if we do a set oh look at that uh, IP4 no you know what they might have taken out the equal cost multipath options let's see here let's do a uh, show full configuration we'll pipe it grip grip <laughs> minus F and for equal cost multipath all right here we go Okay, it's V4. Sorry guys, I completely forgot the uh, I forgot the syntax. So, yep. By the way, I do these completely impromptu. Yay! So, <laughs> config uh, system settings. All right, and then let's do a uh, set. All right, here we go. Question mark. So, if you guys look at here, we do have our Equal cost multipath set up in a previous lab to be source destination IP address. So what that means is that coming from a source interface going to a destination will go one path, and then if that same source goes to a different destination, all right, it will pick the the second path if they are both equal. All right. Normally it's just source. Okay, so wherever something is coming from it will keep on going out that interface unless there's a downed interface But there is a couple of other ones that we can use and one of them is going to be Usage or weight now what weight does is allow us based off of routes or interfaces Distribute the sessions based off of a ratio so we can say give it uh give ratio one or give a <laughs> interface one like five sessions to every one session for link two all right but the usage one is the one that I'm interested in and that's where we can set an actual uh, threshold on the interface all right so we're gonna explore that in a little bit later video I probably should have explained it during that one but I couldn't remember what I had configured here so I had to double check so there you guys go repetition is the mother of all learning so and then also let me just do an end all right don't forget that you can also look at your traffic being distributed here in real time or also if you go to your 40 view down to your session table 
and your all sessions and then you can see the different sessions being load balanced in real time so now if I remember right if we go over to our uh, let's see here our network static routes the reason why it's doing load balancing is because we have our static routes set for let me go ahead and add the priority and the distance here the same distance and the same priority so if those are tied it's going to do equal cost multipathing all right the only problem here is if the primary goes down and the backup WAN starts collecting all the connections and then the primary comes back to life these sessions are still established so they will stay there stuck in the backup WAN until they terminate well if they're always generating traffic they won't terminate and that's a problem so if we want to make sure that only one the primary is used while it's up and then the secondary comes across uh, or or fails over to the the backup WAN and the backup WAN is only being used while that primary is down alright so and we do that by changing the distance so we create a higher distance alright 90 I was gonna do 20 there we go and now that it has a higher distance it will not participate in routing unless this one goes down alright and we can see this by going to monitor and going to our routing monitor and now you will only see one default route out the FortiGate the primary alright so let's go ahead and generate some traffic and see if we can't make sure that is always taking that primary while the primary is up alright so let's go to our Linux machine here if it's still up and running it's been a couple of days since I've been in here alright so this is make internet noise it's one of my favorite sites and it will just generate a whole bunch of web pages for us if it's alive let's make sure it can still connect alright here we go make some noise and I'll make sure it uh... come on buddy You know what? I'll do it from my other machine. <laughs> so here we go. Like I said, it's been a while since I've been in this lab environment, so I will just do it here. Not a big deal. But let's go ahead and generate some traffic. So, all right. So make some noise, or is it internet noise? Internet noise.com. I thought I had that right. Let me take a look real quick. Bloop. Oops. Sorry, guys. I swear it was make internet noise. All right. Oh, it's not make some noise. It's make internet noise. All right, there we go. Here we are. did I do that right yep so it's just gonna randomly be going to web pages so as it does that uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our session table so let's go to our forty view and we'll look at our session table there we go let's see here forty view there we go all sessions All right, and then let's go ahead and look at the outgoing interface. So we'll add that column. Destination interface, bloop. And it should all say port one, primary port one. All right, so, and that's because port two is not being used. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill this link right here. All right, and I'm just going to hover over it just to make sure it's port one. So delete. And because we set up that link health monitor, because that interface never goes down, okay, uh, it will fail over. So once it fails over, 
Come on here. We'll see that. We'll actually first go to our monitor, routing monitor, and our secondary is now the primary. Our backup WAN is the only one being used. All right. So, and as new connections are established, okay, we will see in our 40 view here, back to our session tables, everything should be pushed down. that second board. All right, loop. Now here's the thing. If we were not using a different distance in the routing table, once the primary came back to life, okay, anything that was using that backup WAN would still stay active and alive. And if traffic was still being pushed down those sessions, they would stay established. All right, so what's going to happen here is once we turn the link back on, all right, it's going to add the primary WAN back into the routing table, forcing the secondary out because of it having a higher distance, meaning the backup having a higher distance. And this is what is referred to as redundant link protection. So traffic doesn't stay stuck per se in the second interface. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Are you ready? So let's get our little cabling tool. We'll go back to port one and we'll stick it here on our router again. All right, so after a few moments, okay, it should reestablish it and we'll check that by going to our routing table again. And you will now see only primary WAN is being used now, not the backup WAN, which forces, are you guys ready? 40 view. All right, all sessions, which forces all the other connections now to use the primary. It'll kick all the other ones off, all right? So now if that's a, a concern, obviously, if, if you don't want all of those connections dropping when the failover comes back up, there is a different way to distribute the load, which we'll explore in the next video. But essentially, guys, that is how you do the redundant link protection. So that should be our first goal there. All right. So link protection is when we set a higher distance on our backup links to make sure that if the primary link comes back in, the secondary link is removed, and the only time that the FortiGate's gonna flush out a session is that if there's a route change, all right, or if there's a policy order change, something to keep in mind, all right? So hopefully you find that helpful. In the next video though, and I'll hopefully try to get to it today, we're gonna explain of using both of them, but maybe playing around with the load balancing algorithms. So, all right guys. Until next time, I'll see you then, and I hope who I made this video for found that helpful. All right? So, until then.